This is our Ellis Island. This is our Statue of Liberty. This is an, a landmark in this community that says that we reach out all over the world and create a decent place for people to live and be part of the American dream. And in many ways, I think he would be just delighted to see the current Cedar Riverside complexion. It is um, different ages, different income levels, different population of, uh, every, uh, of every kind. And so I think that's exactly what Dad had hoped Cedar Riverside would accomplish. And I think he'd be proud to see what it has in fact accomplished. You could probably ask anybody on the street and they know somebody that has lived there at some point in time. I mean, my own grandmother lived there for multiple years. It's a real melting pot all in one location. A place that has 1,303 apartments and a school and a store. It's a small city. People want to live here. They tell me that, in fact, people know about Riverside Plaza on the streets of Mogadishu. It's a good place to start your life in the United States. Almost from the initial acquisition of the property in 1988, we understood that the property needed far more rehab than we could undertake even in, the, in those early days. Mistakes that were made in the construction that weren't readily apparent you know, when they built it you know, eventually evolved into some pretty serious problems. It built in 1970 uh, was fraught with problems from day one, whether it be the value engineering of not insulating the pipes, of putting in inexpensive materials. Um, all came back to haunt the project by the time it was only 30 years old. They say they have heat. Sometimes it doesn't work well. Uh, sometimes it's too cold. Uh, sometimes it's too hot. Um, and sometimes it's uncontrollable. We also have had people who didn't have hot water. The hot water system has been a problem. Um, this is one of two large boilers. The other one is behind you. Um, we will be replacing the burner on this boiler. We'll be replacing all of the patio doors on the complex. In the kitchens, um, some of the base cabinets will be replaced. I spent uh, almost two full weekends down here by myself when nobody's calling me and, and I literally walked every building top to bottom and I came up with uh, a whole legal pad full of stuff. We started in February of 2010, really understood the magnitude because what we undertook was something that had not been done before. It's one of the most significant um, undertakings that I know of any, of any housing project in the U.S. In construction, there's always challenges, and this was one that got our whole organization's attention because of what we were going to be tackling and doing, not only for the individual residents, but for the community. We were doing the critical components, the, uh, the work that um, we really couldn't do out of normal operations, and that's replacing entire chases of plumbing. Um, the boilers, the chillers, work that we just can't do um, during standard operations. As the lead lender, we look at the real estate in terms of um, what type of first mortgage we can generate. And in this case, we were coming up with roughly a $50 million first mortgage. The overall construction and rehab budget was, you know, in excess of $130 million. And so we had a, a large gap. This project uses pretty much every source available in, in Minnesota. We use low-income housing tax credits, federal historic tax credits, and the project uh, benefits from the, the newly enacted state historic credit, which really, really was the engine for this closing. And then Ann focused a lot uh, as well on the multiple soft sources that are available in Minnesota which include, I think, maybe two. We had um, two different sources from MHFA, both uh, PERIF and Challenge. We had um, the city provided um, affordable housing trust funds. We had several environmental soft sources from the county and from Met Council. And then we had several uh, GP loans as well. So all together, there was about 12 layers of subordinate debt. I mean, George was the lead developer in the mastermind of putting all this together, but at the end of the day, it was really a, it was also a very strong local community effort. Welcome. Uh, this is an historic event. It's a historic building and historic uh, time to be together. And it's time now to make sure that the people who live here have an even better place to live. It's not okay to have to wait 40 minutes for a warm shower and you won't have to. We're going to fix that. And it's not okay to have too much energy being used in this building. That's going to be fixed too. 
we are saying something great today. We're saying it in large part because we have a great developer who in the worst economic times has stuck through all sorts of things. George Sherman, thank you so much. Where are you, George? Thank you for your phenomenal work. Plans started development uh, probably six to eight months prior to closing of the financing in, in January of 2010. Uh, extensive, very uh, thoughtful and detailed oriented plan. And that included initially going in and doing the environmental abatement, all the demo work. You can see how bad it broke up this pipe is right here. That's been cracked like that for a long time. Then doing a lot of the mechanical upgrades to the unit. Then beginning to go in and do some of the finishes, um, refurbishing the windows, installing the new sliding glass door, installing the fire protection, new cabinets, new appliances, repainting the walls. Meanwhile, while all this work's occurring, our relocation crews have already gone through the units, moved residents out, moved all the furniture that was in the unit to the center of the unit typically, and moved it out of the way of the, where the work's occurring. At the end of the month, we are then moving all the furniture back to its original places. Uh, until we were able to start doing the work, nobody really understood how, how deep these changes were. When we look at it, we can look at what we had to do to the units mechanically or electrically, but when you look at it in total, it, it's, it, it becomes incredible. There has um, never been anything like this done before, ever. They don't let you do it all by yourself, you know. They come in, they fix the boxes up for you. So, but nobody likes to move. <laughs> Her name is uh, Juice. And the boy over here, he's OJ. Keep in mind, you are taking a family uh, and relocating them for 30 days. I equate it to if it was your aunt or your uncle that were being relocated, how would you like them to be treated? Every month is different. Every unit is different. Every family has their own needs. And you only know once you get there. It was an overwhelming task, but when you could see and put the, the human picture behind it and see what it really meant to the residents and then collectively what it meant to the community and what we were doing with the whole Riverside complex and how it was going to help the community, that's a, that was a pride. The pride that I had on my face when I first walked the staff through here. here. We have a miniature library. I'd be lying if I said that there weren't any tears. And for Sherman and Associates and Knutson to deliver that without question, and we haven't had one single delay in our calendar as a result of any new construction, is, is, is absolutely amazing. I think this shows that we can do it, do it on time, and um, I think it, it sets a new standard for what, what can be done on saving uh, 1970 buildings with residents uh, in place. Man, almost ready. Oh! Oh, look at this! Oh! This is so re it's re really nice. It is uh, extremely rewarding, uh, and, and all the hard work and the long hours that we a lot of people have put through uh, for that moment, it makes it worth it. So now that the project is done, people are extremely excited about the quality of life. You know, hot water, as soon as they turn on that faucet, the hot water is there. The pressure of the shower, the air conditioning, the heat, everything is working how they were meant to be. Well, I think we're clearly hearing that people uh, like the new exterior appearance of the building. Um, they like the paint job. It's probably the most visible thing that people can see as they drive by and they, uh, you know, appreciate that it is looking like it was meant to look when it was originally built. I think if Dad were standing in the middle of one of the Cedar Riverside plazas tomorrow morning, he would just be tickled. I think he would be tickled that so many of his original aspirations were achieved. Mixed income, mixed use, you know, multicultural. But I think he would have been particularly pleased to see it taken up so uh, wholeheartedly by a whole new generation of Americans. It would have been tragic for the city of Minneapolis to lose this many affordable units all at one time. I, I don't think that we could have absorbed it. So to have George Sherman step up and preserve these units, improve these units, improve the energy efficiency of these units is a huge improvement for the whole community, the whole city of Minneapolis. I think the most exciting thing for me 
uh, was able to see the team building, the, the community and management coming together, working together through the challenges and being able to, to solve issues. And I think that established a big, strong route for the future. So we'll continue to work to improve not only our building facilities, but our community.